the title of this video was was the come bet versus place bet showdown or something like that. And I, I always frame this argument, and I'm gonna say in air quotes this argument. There's this weird, like I keep saying, there's a weird notion of come bets versus place bets. And you get the guys that are, are really into the pure math of the game, and it's like it's come bets with odds, and that's the only, the only way to play. And from a house edge standpoint, sure, that's the lowest house edge way to play. There's guys that say that's stupid. The place bet's the only way to play. Okay, there can be an argument made that that works better too. I don't believe that either one of them is wrong or right in this case. And I think, um, yeah, mathematically, the come bet with odds is probably the mathematical best way to play. However, it comes down to the word that I have on screen here, which is rhythm. Rhythm is where this is at. Um, and I think both strategies will win in rhythm if the dice are with you, right? And it, and it all comes down to when you're at risk, how much you have risk at the time you're at risk, and what the dice are doing at that time. I think that's an interesting, and I think it makes it the most interesting way to talk about this topic. So what I wanna do today is I wanna roll out the standard three-point molly, not the three-point Johnny that I do, the molly, the normal, Mathematical, let's do, and I might even do two. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do three or two, um, but I'm gonna roll it out, and I'm gonna roll out along with that a 64 across pineapple press, where it's gonna go a, a typical place better with a, an across bet, one, two, three hits, the fourth hit we come down, and that's it. We're gonna roll, and I might, I might actually go down to 44 inside, but we're gonna do a, a, a three hit progression with a regression built in versus a three-point molly. And the reason why I wanna show you that is because of table rhythm. And I wanna talk about where the edge comes into play, um, at what point we're both at risk. And you'll see that in a lot of cases, they're at risk at opposite times, which makes it very interesting when you see how these things work out. So I think that it, it's gotta be come bets in place bets. You've gotta have both of these in your arsenal. You've gotta know how to play them both so you can pull either one of them out of the holster whenever you feel like it, or when the table says to, or when it's just you're changing your own mindset. Say, I'm gonna to switch to be a come better. How do I do it? I'm gonna show you how to do it. And if you're a come better, you say, I'm tired of you know, losing on the come out, or whatever, whatever your reasoning is, I wanna to switch to place bets. Well, here's how you do it. I want you to have both bullets in your gun, if that makes sense. That's the reasoning for this today. It's not an or situation, it's not a versus situation, it's an and situation. They are both good, used in the right circumstance, if they work with your bankroll, and if you understand how they work. And I think that's, I think, the way to approach this. So that's why, um, that's what this series is about today, or the, the video today is about come bets and place bets and the right ways to play them. So I think that's where I wanna go to uh, at the table. So before I do, Looks like I have a, a, a note here from Tim. So Wayland says you can't win with scared money, but you have to have good money management and discipline to stay on strategy. Very, very true. And the short stack thing that I'm talking about, let me go back back a screen before I go to the table because I want I want I think this I think you're addressing this screen here. Um, the short stack is not always about scared money. Okay, the short stack is about mainly two things. One is you have lost. Okay, you burned your, you, you brought a thousand, you burned yourself down to 200, okay, that which, which happens. Um, you catch a bad run. And that's what you have left. And it's not about playing with scared money, it's about that's all I got. So how do I best play with the smallest amount of money that I have? That's the reasoning for this. And if you get into that situation, how do you build that 200 bucks back into a thousand so you can go back with the right strategy? Does that make sense? The other thing I, I look at this with, with the short stack is, if I've brought a thousand and I've won more than a thousand, I've won more than my goal. My goal was to win 200, which it often is. And I've won three, let's say, let's say you won 350. Well, cool. Lock the 200 up, play with the 150. I don't call that scared money. I call it smart money. And that's where I go out with, with a, a different mindset with that money than I do with my full bankroll. And I think if you've worked hard enough to win your goal, I wouldn't put my goal at risk. I'd put the extra at risk, but not my goal. And that's the way I play because I play often enough that um, the goal that I set each session is as important to me as hitting a home run. So that's, I think that's where I, I that's where I, I lie. So with that said, head to the table. Let's go back over here. I'm gonna zoom in first. Um, and I, and I, I set up my racks today in such a way that the rack is next to the rules <laughs> for that strategy. So the, the three point molly money is up top and the pineapple press money is down below. So as I'm playing this thing out, 
you'll get a chance to see who's doing quote unquote better in the rack, but really it's not about better or worse. The idea here is that it's about rhythm and when we're at risk in certain strategies. So you understand the differences between them to make your decisions better. So hopefully that that, that works well. One player, the player in the front rack here, they're gonna come out every single time the same way. We're not gonna do any alterations. We're gonna do a 64 across bet. We're gonna press the six and the eight. If we get a hit, we're gonna press the five and nine, press the four and 10, then we're gonna regress down to 44 inside. That's the whole play. We're not gonna change anything about it. I'm not gonna read the table. I'm not gonna press different numbers. I'm not gonna go into the field. I'm just gonna play the root strategy as is. I'm not gonna change a damn thing because Again, this is not about which strategy wins more. It's not about how to transition from this to something. This is about the rhythm of the player, the rhythm of a come better versus the rhythm of a place better. And that's the whole point here. Again, think of this as a, a lesson, if you will, in, in rhythm and in the game of, in, in gameplay, not so much a lesson in how to work a table. Working a table is a different thing. The other player is gonna, we're gonna do three, and I'll do it with Nichols here, we'll demonstrate it. One combat that'll travel. We're gonna make a decision based on bankroll, how much odds to put. I'm gonna put one ship in odds just to, just to show that they're there, okay? The amount's a little different. Second combat, some odds. The third combat, and some odds. And as these things come down, what will happen, let's just say that the 10 were to hit, I'll just give you a quick example. The 10 comes down, we get paid one for the front, and two for the back. What I will do with that is I'll double up the odds, or double up the flat bet, and bring this back to the rack. Each time a come bet wins, I will double what the base was, and I'll, I'll basically press the base so I can have more in odds the next time through. That's the only change that I'll make to the normal quote unquote molly is I'm gonna press up the, uh, the base bets so I can afford more odds coming through the next time. And I should be able to build those things up with winnings mostly. That's all I'm gonna do. Again, not, it's not about which strategy is better than the other strategy. Okay, this, stra this whole day is about the rhythm of how these things play and to discuss again how the come bets and place bets work, especially for those of you who are newer players. And that's gonna be the idea here. So here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna roll this out. Let me switch to my other camera view here which is the longer view of the table. So you can see the dice land. I hope you can see the dice land. So here we go. Let's get rolling. And, and the, the bank rolls are this way. We're not, they're not the same money. This person, the, the come better has 600 bucks. There's, or 500, there's 400 in greens and there's 100 in reds. The other person has got uh, seven shooters at 70 bucks. So it's like 490. Okay, so se or 70 bucks per shooter to get us to 64, or I'm sorry, seven times 65. So whatever that comes out to, it's, it's, it's less than 500. We're gonna look for a percentage win. That's all we're looking for is a percentage win. And we'll roll it out and we'll see uh, not so much who has the most dollars, but who has the most percentage win at the end. And that's it. And again, we're not competing. This is just designed to show you two different ways of thinking about the game. And we'll run it at the same time because it gives us a chance to talk about where our risks are. So here we go. We're gonna roll this out. We're both gonna bypass the come out. We could put the Molly person on the pass line. I'm gonna choose not to. I'm just choosing not to. Okay, point's gonna be a six. So first player, the place better, is gonna go 64 across. I've got 65 bucks here. And here we go. We'll get a dollar change and we'll go 64 across. Now this may go a little slow. Uh, because, I think I counted that wrong. It'll go a little slow because I um, have to put 64 bucks out every single time. So that's their bet. The come better, we're gonna do a $10 base. We're at a $10 table here, $10 base. And when it comes up, I'm gonna take for now, I'm just gonna go single odds, only because the bankroll is short. I realized that when I play with, with odds, odds reduce the house edge. The house edge for a come bet is most stout when it's here, okay? Um, it's, and, uh, hold on, looking at the chats. No, so I'm not gonna do don't come for anything. Uh, again, I'm not changing anything other than the basic strategy today. We're not gonna do any transitions. I'm not gonna do any, 
Anything other than the core of the strategy, again, I'm not trying to win money here, I'm trying to show you the rhythm of the rolling. So here's the deal. And for those of you who don't know how come bets work, I'm gonna demonstrate this with, with, with Lammers. In the come, there's this, right? If you can see it, it's a virtual off button. All right, it's a virtual off button. In other words, this bet acts like the table does when the puck is off, okay? At this moment, that bet wins on the seven or 11, it loses on the two, three, or 12. So you have, there's four ways to roll a two, three, or 12. Two ways each for the two and the 12, and two ways for the three. Four ways to lose, there are six ways to win on a six, and two ways to win on an 11. You have a two to one advantage right now for this next roll coming in. Every other roll, results in a box number and this bet would travel in and become on. We'll show you that here in a minute. So the come bet's gonna be waiting for a point to be set. At this point, from a rhythm standpoint, we have a point set. Player one down here has $64, 100% at risk, right? They're, right now, this is when they're sweating. They're sweating for the next four rolls. They gotta, they gotta get four rolls to make money. This person here is not sweating. This person here, is in an advantage position right now. They will win on a seven, they're not. So from a rhythm standpoint, we're already playing the opposites. I'm gonna get my butt kicked on a seven, I'm gonna win on a seven. Both right side players, okay? So you'll see how this shifts here if things work out. There's a hard six for the point, right? Point is gonna be hit. This come bet is gonna travel, actually, I'll, I'll pay this person first. That person's gonna pay uh, 14 bucks. Let's do that first. They will win uh, $14. And that player, in the, this is this guy's money, this player in the front is gonna press the inside numbers first. We're gonna press the six and the eight, each by one, to 18 bucks. They'll take $2 back to the house. The come better is gonna move to the six. And we're gonna go ahead and place, for now, I've got the money to do it. We'll do 25 in odds. I'm not gonna go max. Again, kind of a shorter bankroll here. 500 bucks is not a lot of money to play a molly with. So we'll go, we'll go 25 in odds. The puck will be off. And now we're gonna come out. And when I come out on come bets, you have the option to leave the odds turned off or on. I will turn the odds on. Which means, at this moment, the place better now has no risk. When the puck is off, his bets are off. From a rhythm standpoint, we can breathe, we can get a drink, we can kind of relax for a minute, there's no risk to us here. Now the come better is the one sweating. So it's, the tables have flipped. This guy here is now sweating the seven. This guy is not sweating the seven. So again, from, we, we turn the tables on ourselves, but this person has more opportunity. Why do I leave the odds on, on the, on the come out? We talk about the dice having personality. The dice don't know that it's a come out roll. The seven's gonna come when the seven's gonna come. Um, especially when it's on a six or an eight or, or a five even or a nine. Those are easy numbers to get to. So on the come out roll, you have a pretty good chance of, of whacking one in here and taking that money. If, you're, if you have money on the table, I think use it if you have the chance to. So I'm gonna leave the odds on on the molly as I do this. Not everybody does that. I will be aggressive here with that. So here we are coming out at risk, not at risk. Look at that, Atlanta, right on top of the thing. That's actually a, a good roll. That actually counts. That's a 6-1-7. So my decision to leave the odds on uh, proved to be not great, but I like my aggressive play, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that, okay? Seven out. Let's get ourselves a number here. It's gonna be a 5-6-yo. My table is very crowded today, so it's hard to work the stick. Another five, six, six, five, yo, yo, 11, yo. There's a ace deuce, the shocker. That's four in a row trying to get out of the box here. There's a 10. All right, six, four, 10 is gonna be our point. That's great. Point is a 10. The come better will now come back out. And once again, the tables have shifted where the place better now has all the risk. Come better has no risk. There's a five, four, nine. All right, so the nine's gonna pay 14 bucks. Uh, we'll actually pay that with $15 for $1 out of the rack. That person is gonna press up 
the five and the nine, we have an extra nickel, I'll put it on the five, just picking one of them. I want all that money in action. So we're gonna always press the entire thing in action. That's two hits. We've pressed the insides all the way. Next goes to here. This combat travels to the nine. And for the nine, we'll take, uh, we'll put $20 in odds. Odds must be even on the five and nine because you're gonna get paid three to two. So I have to put multiples of two out here to get three. So I put 20 bucks, that's two sets of 10, that'll pay 30 bucks. It'll pay three sets of 10. There's the odds on the nine, and the Molly person comes back out. Now from a rhythm standpoint, again, this player here has collected zero dollars. They're still completely exposed. The come better now has, this will win on the seven, this will lose on the seven. Those two effectively cancel each other out. What's really at risk for the come better is their odds here. If we left it like this, they'd be in an even situation. Flats versus flats, seven doesn't, doesn't matter. The odds here are where the risk is for the come better. So they're risking their odds while they're in the come. And that's an important distinction for us to make. Here we go. Next roll out is a five, three, eight. That's a fantastic result. Okay, the, the eight is gonna pay $21. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and press up the outsides, the four and the 10, and take the dollar back home. So this person's got three bucks in their rack. They have made the inside press, the mid press, and the outside press, and they're set. They need one more roll. The come better now comes into the eight, and again, we're gonna put 25 bucks on the eight, and the way that the eight and six odds works, they pay six to five. There's five nickels inside of a quarter, which means it pays six nickels. So we're gonna get paid 30 bucks if that were to come out. And we have our next combat. Looking at a, a risk assessment here, where are we now? If we take a look at this, where are we right now? The place better still has how much money at risk? $64 at risk, which is what they put out there to start with. They're still at full risk. The come better now has 10, 20 in flat bets, plus 20, so that's uh, 50 bucks, right? Or 40 bucks, rather, plus 25, that's 45 bucks at risk, $10 would win on the seven. So they got $35 in net risk to them. I'm sorry, not, that's right. 25, 35, 55, 65 up here, sorry, at risk to the seven, but 10 that would win on the seven. So they're actually a $55 net risk for these two bets versus a $64 risk. Right now they're approaching the point where they both have the, the same amount essentially at risk. So I lost my dice, where'd my dice go? Interesting. Oh, here they are, right in front of me. Okay, here we go. On a point of 10, we're working. Ooh, hard 10, hard 10, that's beautiful. All right, so what happens here is this 10 at, at 20, assume we bought it, we'll assume we bought the 10. That's gonna pay 40 bucks. For the place better. The place better's next move is gonna go down to 44 inside. They're gonna, they've hit their three, they're gonna reduce down to 44 inside, so I'm gonna do that move right now in front of you. We're gonna take the four and the 10 down. We're gonna bring the five and nine down to 10 bucks each. We're gonna bring the six and eight down to 12 bucks each. There's that person's winning. So I'm gonna actually, I'm, I'm gonna color it up only for the purposes of saving red chips. So you wouldn't, you'd never get this paid to you in color in a casino but I'm gonna do it here just to make it easy to pay, all right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, sorry. So there's gonna be 75 bucks in reds. He's bringing back 102 to the rack, okay? 102 plus the three he won before. Essentially, we can put back into the back side of the rack um, I'm gonna get reds for that one quarter there just to make the rack look right. This person can go ahead and reset the back side of their rack. And now their initial bankroll is complete with a guaranteed profit of 50 bucks or 45 bucks. 25 plus three reds plus five whites. 40 bucks in the rack guaranteed profit if this person decided to leave, okay? And they're set up with 44 inside. The come better now, um, that moves into the 10. That person will put will put single odds on that one. Again, I'm trying to manage bankroll in here. And now the puck is off because the point was hit. 
and the sh risk shifts again. Okay, the risk shifts again. The come better now is fully at risk. Everything here is, is, is exposed. We have 10, 20, $30 in flat bets. I have 10 in odds on the 10 that makes 40 bucks. I have 20 in odds on the nine that makes 80 bucks, or I'm sorry, 60 bucks, and 25 on the six and eight, which goes to $85 at risk for the come better. They've received no money yet. And the, the burden shifts now with the puck off to this person being most exposed. This person has got zero exposure at this, at this point of the game and profit. But when these things start hitting, assuming that they do, that come better is going to start really showing some good profits in here if we can get them to hit again. Now, the place better at this point, I'm going to do the simplest possible thing. We're just going to go up and pull. One unit up, pull the rest. That's going to be that simple. Nice and easy. I'm not going to do any thinking today. I'm just going to play out the most basic possible way. There's a 415. This person may at some point spread to the four and 10, but probably not. I'm gonna keep it simple. So that um, five is gonna pay, we'll do, we'll do a 15 for $1 from the rack. It pays 14, we'll give them a buck and get back $15. And I'm gonna press that by one unit and bring back 10. I'm gonna move the whites out of the way here. Okay, here we go. I need, this, I need the eight, nine or 10 to repeat for this come better here, if we can do it. Hey, awesome, hard 10, beautiful. All right, the hard 10 pays the come better. That's awesome. This is gonna come down and get paid. The way that come bets work is the flat bet gets paid one to one, the odds bet get pays, gets paid true odds. In case of the four and 10, it gets paid two to one. So we get paid 20 for 10 on the odds, 10 for 10 on the front. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna up by a unit. We're gonna go to $15 on the come bet. I'm gonna keep going up, pressed by one unit each time. And that'll let me get more odds coming through. I'm gonna let this next bet sit in the come and bring the rest of this back to my rack. That was a nice hit right there. Again, the 10 cent on come bets is, is, is a good, good win. $15 coming, so from a rhythm standpoint, again, no risk here, they're just on a collect system. This person here now has 20, 30, 40, uh, and 25, so they have 65 bucks at risk here, 15 in the come on the seven, which is good, the seven will actually help them mitigate some of the risk they have here while this next come out roll is happening. Five, four, nine, that's beautiful. That goes to the nine. This is a great result for both players. We'll do the place better first. Again, he'll get paid 15 for one. We're gonna press that by one and rack the 10. We're gonna go up and pull, up and pull each time. The come better, the way that this is gonna work, check this out, I'm gonna bring their bets back. They're gonna get paid on their flat bet, 10 bucks for the flat piece. The odds, which were 20, will get paid 30. They get paid, it gets paid three to two. So 30 bucks for their odds. The bet that was in here, this 45 bucks, goes into the nine. And we're gonna go ahead and take $30 in odds on that nine. We're gonna do double odds here on the nine. Everything else comes back into our rack. So we're gonna rack that up. And this person has got all of their red chips back, plus one. They're just down a couple of greens, which are actually out here in action right now, which is actually good. This person, technically speaking, is in profit at this moment. They have a profit working right now. That's great. Um, they got to come back out, though, because that comeback gets set. We're at the $15 level here for the next comeback. Hopefully, we'll get it to a good number. Ooh, good. 6-5, yo. That's great. So again, the comebacker in the come has this great advantage, right? That's the house edge at work for you. This bet has a terrible house edge when it's set, but in this moment, it's beautiful. And results like that, this one-to-one -one action, that's awesome. That goes to the rack. That bet is still waiting to be set. Here we go. Seven out, all right. The place better lost nothing. $44 goes away, which was what they had out there in action. But remember that none of that was at risk because they had pulled back a profit earlier, the come better is gonna lose all of this. They're gonna lose 50, 75, 80 bucks that they had out here in action. They will get paid 15 bucks for that come bet as it was coming through. So that come bet actually, which is interesting, it looks like they got their butts kicked. This come bet paid them on a seven and on an 11, it actually paid twice, which is not, it feels like it was bad, 
they're actually not in bad shape at all. They're doing pretty well. Here we go. Puck is off. We're going to come back out again, bypassing the come out for both players. Looks like, um, yeah. Okay, here we go. That's a midnight, midnight. Five. Three, two, five is going to be the new point of five. So what I'm going to do here with this person, they don't have enough, I don't think, to go across. They don't. They have enough in their profits to not quite get there. So I'm going to pull another shooter from the back of the rack. And they're going to go out clean with this here. So we're going to come out and go 64 across. I think I've got the money counted right. I have one extra green or one extra white. White chip coming back. Okay, that person's out and ready to go. Come better. 10 bucks in the come. And here we go. Out on point of five. Winner five. Five winner five. Okay. We get paid 14 bucks. Let's get our, our whites here. 14 bucks on the five. This person is going to press up the six and the eight and take back two bucks. This bet moves to the five. They'll take 20 in odds. Odds will be working while the puck is off. I'm going to put the lammer on there so we know those are working. Come out. Again, place better, no risk right now. Come better, all the way at risk. So the, the tides turn based on the puck with place bets and come bets. Hard 10 is our new point, hard 10. Now the place better is back on, the come better is coming out. And again, from a rhythm standpoint, this person could still lose 64, 64 bucks. This person could lose 20 bucks. The odds are at risk, these two would be a wash on a seven. Okay, the lambert's not needed. Here we go. Out on a point of 10. Ooh, 617, that's actually good to see. So what'll happen here is the come better loses all of this, but they get paid here. So they did end up losing 20 bucks, which was their odds bet. But this bet here pays off. If we bring it back to the rack, you'll see that they now have more than they started with on the red side. The reds had four stacks of, tw of 25 bucks. Now they have four stacks plus a little bit extra. They're light two greens. This person here just gets hammered on that one, right? From a rhythm standpoint, they're presetting all their bets. So they're at risk the entire time until they get that payment. So they're actually out a pretty good chunk of dough, which again, from a rhythm standpoint, matters. When you lose your money is important. So now this person not only doesn't have enough money in the front to go 64, I don't think they do, 50, oh, they do. We can actually use their front rack. So they act, this actually is 65 bucks here. So we can take their profits from the first round and go out. Puck's off, let's get a new point. We'll do one more shooter and we'll call it here for time. Three, two, five. Three, two, five, here we are at the point of five. Come better, 10 bucks in the come. Place better, I think has enough money here, we'll, we'll see if we do. Should be 25. 10, 20. I do. Good. With two bucks extra. So this person is technically speaking, one, two, three, four, five, six, they're shooter number seven. They actually have a $2 profit, if you can believe that. After losing the whole 65 bucks, they're $2 in profit. Here we go. Wow, what a big roll. Five, five, hard 10. Five, five, hard 10. Come bet moves to the 10. They'll take single odds on that. This 10 here is gonna get paid 18 bucks. 18 bucks, and again, we're gonna press up our six and our eight, and I'm gonna use all in betting. So we'll make the six look like 18. I'll make the eight look like 24. Full press, full press on that inside. Here we go again. Next one, coming out. Hard four, so the come better, unfortunately, is stuck on the outsides. Um, not where you wanna be, but it is what it is. So he has the four and the 10 working for him. He's coming out with one more. That four down there is gonna pay 18 bucks. I'm gonna pay that actually uh, 20. It pays 18, we're gonna take a payment of 20 for two bucks, do some little Little math right there, we'll press the five and then I'm both up to 20 bucks, okay? 
another comeback coming out. Now again, the place better, all $64 at risk. The come better now has 40 bucks at risk here, 10 coming, so technically speaking, 30 bucks at risk. So as they're getting themselves set, their risk level increases as they go, but there's always a little buffer in here. Here we go. 628, 888. Eight, eight. That's awesome. Come back, we'll move to the eight. He'll put 25 in odds on it. The eight here at 24 is gonna pay $28. And I'm gonna pay that with reds. It pays 28 bucks. And again, we'll take this and we'll go with the four and the 10, both going to 20 bucks. I have $8 left over. Let's put that onto the six and make the six look like 24, along with the eight, two bucks in the rack. Now, place better, $64 at risk. The come better has 10, 20, 30, 40, let's see, 40 and 25, so he's got uh, 65 at risk. They're both at the same exact risk level right now. Finally, they're evened up on the board. Three combat set, 64 out. G getting a number here helps this person a whole lot. 516, it did not help the come better because he wasn't on it. But that 24 will pay 28. And once again, we're gonna go down to 64. We'll go to 44 inside. So we're gonna take these down. We'll go to 44 inside. And we're gonna work the up and pull for the place better at this point. And again, I'm gonna color these up where I can. There's a quarter for that nickel, for those sets of nickels. If I go 25, 50, 70, that's their rack. Their rack is complete. They're back to their full allotment of shooters with a small profit, but a profit. I'll keep the whites and the reds separate here, but they've got about 30, 40 bucks or so in profit from that. And now they're no risk. This person has lost all the risk. They're good. They can just press and collect moving forward. The come better needs to do work. Okay, and again, they've got their full 65 bucks out here at risk. So the rhythm now favors the place better, whereas before it favored the come better on the way out. Here's a four, that's great. That's twice the outsides it paid for us, that's awesome. So we get paid one to one on the flat and two to one on the odds on that four. That's an awesome hit. Like last time, I'm gonna press it up. I'm gonna take my winnings and go one, two, three. We're gonna go up a little higher for our next come bet. Going higher on the flat means that I can afford to put more odds on it potentially as we go out. Hard six, hard six. So the comeback goes into the six, we have 15 bucks. Let's go ahead and drop 50 on it. A Little higher odds here. That front line, the front six is gonna get paid, let's do 14 bucks. Actually, yeah, we'll do, now we'll do 15 for one. I'll do 15 for one. And we're gonna press the six up by one unit. I'll take another buck from my rack. And bring back 10. Come better needs to get something to repeat here before the seven comes. Shocker. One, two, three. Come on. Ooh, aces. Two horns in a row. Six, three, nine. Okay. Come better is not on the nine, but the place better is. Again, 15 for one up and pull, up and pull. Regression, up and pull. If you're playing the place best, that's a great way to go. Six, five, yo, but we're not in the come, doesn't matter. Gotta get these numbers to hit. The six and eight have gotta come off and pay for this, this poor come better here. There it is, there's the eight, five, three, eight. Awesome sauce, okay. That's gonna come down. We'll get paid 10 for the flat. We'll get paid 30 for our odds, which is awesome. We're gonna come back with a $15 size come bet. I'm gonna put these greens back into the back side of the rack and start building that back to where it's gonna be normal. And these two tens are building up extra red. So I'm really, I'm, when I'm down here on the come betting side, he needs four, four shots of four, he's got three plus an extra green. So he's down 75 bucks, it's out here working. Just gotta get that money back in the rack. Here we go. Come on, five, three, eight. So it's a repeater, that's gonna come up in here. Um, did I, uh, I may not have paid myself, it doesn't matter. Um, there's 15 bucks there, we're gonna go with another 15 odds for this guy here, okay? This eight's gonna pay, we'll do, uh, again, 15 
or one. I'm gonna drop a dollar and press the eight by one unit and bring back some reds. So far, pretty good roll here. We gotta get some more repeats. Another nine, five, four, nine. Come better is not on the nine. Nine has 15 at pace 21. And again, the up and pull system looks like this, pace 21. It goes to 20, and now we're pulling back 15 on that one. So you're always pulling money back. It's a slower build, but it's more, um, you're always pulling more money back to your rack when you get. There's another nine. Wow, that's awesome. That pays 28. 28 bucks. And we're just going to go ahead and drop a nickel to go up by a unit just to make it easier on the dealers. That actually is a quarter now. Here we go, up and pull. We need a six, eight, or a 10, come on. Let's get it done. There's a six, fantastic. That was the big one too. All right, Place Better has 18, that pays 21. Again, we're gonna go up, up one unit to 24, pull the three reds. This person here, that big come bet comes down and it gets paid like this, 15 bucks on the flat and it gets, gets paid 60 bucks on the back end. For those odds. That's a great, great, great hit right there. So the net effect of that is this. Watch this. The rack is going to be, I think, back to normal or damn close to it. Damn close to it, looks like. Greens are almost full. Matter of fact, if I take these reds and make them a green, they're back. This come better now has their full bankroll back. They have nothing at risk at this point. They have a new come back coming out. They have all the money they started with in the rack. They have two bucks or two nickels extra and they have all their money in action. Both, from a rhythm standpoint, both players have no risk, no skin in the game right now. Everything that rolls that's not a seven is making somebody money, which is good. There's a five, four, nine, five, four, nine. Combat will travel into the nine and we'll do 30 in odds on that nine, okay? This person here, um, 25 is gonna pay 35. And again, up and pull. It goes to 30, and we rack. Here we go. Let's get a big hit. Let's get that eight to hit. There's a four, nobody's on it. There's a six. That rolled, that was a six, not a seven. It was here. Um, that 24, is that 24? Yeah, pace 28. Pace 28. We'll drop six bucks out here. And we'll go to 30. Clean that up a little bit. Okay, the six is at 30. Here we go. Eight, nine, or 10. Get this come better paid. There's a four, which nobody's on. This is a really good roll, by the way. Really good rent. The other day, when I rolled that 11 straight, 0.7 ounce, whatever the hell it was, um, today's a little different. There's it, here we are, six, three, nine. That's awesome, the nine. Place better. Gets paid 42 bucks. We'll go up by a unit. Come better on that nine. It's gonna pay uh, 15 for his flat bet and 30 is gonna pay 45. So we'll do for him is we'll go 50 for five. There's the come better. Now, again, I'm gonna press this up. We're gonna go to 20 bucks as the base, get a new base. Rack is tight. This is their starting bankroll, and now there's profit. So the come better now is showing profit. I should probably put the reds over here, I suppose, just to keep the profit where it should be. So the come better now has a, uh, 65 bucks in profit, Two bets working, one bet coming out, and nothing at risk because their bankroll is completely sane. The place better's bankroll, completely sane. They're both doing really good now. From a rhythm standpoint, we're at no risk. But again, the seven pays in here for the, play, for the come better. The seven just takes the place better's money. I like the rhythm of the, of the come bets because you do get money coming and going. There's a five, three, eight. That's 18, it pays 21. 21. Again, we'll up it by six to 24. Place better takes 15 bucks back to the rack. Come better here, fantastic win. $15 flat and 50 pays 
60 on the back end of that thing. That's a huge win. This 20 bucks can move in, it was an eight, right? Yeah, it moves into the eight. We'll just take 50 from that and put it right back on his odds. From our winnings, now this person is just racking money. They're just gonna be down here just stockpiling and watch how fast they catch up, right? Watch how fast these come bets as they come through and start paying, catch right back up. Here goes a $20 come bet. We're upping the ante every time we come back out. Huge roll, that's an eight. Wow, that is beautiful. Okay, he plays better. 24 pays 28. We're gonna go ahead and drop six bucks directly and ask to go to 30. Press it up one, rack and rack. This again, come back, it's gonna come down. And I'll pay it out like so. We get paid 20 for the flat. 50 pays 60 on the back side. This travels in. Again, we'll put 50 bucks in odds. I can actually go to 75 here because at the $25 level, I'll go a little higher with it. And this all becomes profit. We'll come back out here with a, another $20 come bet. Drop in profit, drop in profit. Here we go. Coming back out. I'm out of red chips completely. I'm going to color stuff up. One, three, four. That goes to the four. 20 bucks into the four. We'll do 20 bucks. We'll do one to one odds down there as we go. And nobody else is on it. I'm going to have to color this guy up because I have no more red chips. So pardon the, the distraction while I do this part here. Uh, there's that. There's, a, there's four greens coming back to him. Okay, looking good. Looking good here. Still out in that point of that five has not been hit yet. There's an eight. Wow. Fantastic. This is 30, by the way. I should have I should have fixed that up. There's 30. That pays 35. Again, up a unit. Pull back profit. This eight, same as before. Check this out. $20 flat and uh, 75. Each of those quarters pays 30. 75 pays 90 on the odds. That is yummy right there. Look at that. What a great hit. What a great hit for the come better. All that comes down, we're gonna to go to a quarter now in the come. We're gonna increase ourselves up. And all of this comes back to the rack. That come better makes up the difference quickly when those things come out and pay like that. That's beautiful. Here we go, coming out. Five, four, nine. So the nine at, what is that? 35 bucks. It's gonna pay, how much does that pay? It pays 35. 14, so it pays 49. We'll do 50 for one on that, actually. 50 for one on this guy here. We'll rack that up, and he'll increase it by one. Come bet moves into the nine, and he's going to go ahead and put down. We'll put 40 bucks. Double that up. 40 to win 60 back there. And the monster roll continues. You guys are all chatting about how much money you would have won if you weren't doing up and pull, right? You should be at table max right now. If you're doing the power press, you're probably at table max. It's okay, 35 bucks on the six. Again, I'm demonstrating rhythm. Rhythm, not style, right? We're just looking to see who's at risk when. And right now, both players have the same risk, which is zero. They're just on a collect, okay? That pays 42. Ah, fumble fingers, 42. Goes to 42, and we're racking. Players are doing great here. Let's get that nine to hit, shall we? We hit nine on the come better. Hey, we hit the point finally. Three, two, five. My goodness. It pays 14 bucks. Finally, it pays 14 bucks. 15 for one. Up by unit, rack the 10. Puck is off. All right, how are we doing on time here? We're at nine o'clock, so I'm gonna have to call that session right there. Uh, it's not that I'm hell bent on doing come bets. Um, what, I, what I'm responding to here is, and maybe you didn't hear this earlier, but I get so much negative feedback when I run strategies, right? From the, the, the math come bet folks and the place bet folks, both people think I'm a um, dumbass for doing one or the other. You've gotta see the rhythm of both. And I think 
having, like I said before, the ability to know how to work a combat system like this, where you take your win, bring it down, increase the unit level, increase the odd, and you use your wins to do it, that's the way to work a combat system. What I just did there, that's the best way to do it. The only thing I didn't do there was take max odds every time, okay? If I would have taken max odds, we would, we would have done more, more better money-wise, right? But again, this is about how often do we win? What's the win frequency? And when do you win? When are you at risk? And as soon as both players got themselves to be risk-free betting, all bets are off, right? And both, both of them made good money. I mean, in the rack, honestly, the place better made, it looks to me, I should have called it up, but the place better made about 150 bucks more than the come better did in that situation. Um, but the come better still has got a bunch of money out there that, that's exposed that he could win with. So I think it's, it's definitely, like I said, it's a rhythm thing to me. It's when are you at risk? There are points in, in, in time there where the come better had all the risk on the come out, the place better had none. But then once the points established, the place better bears all the risk and the come better has no risk. So when you're at risk is different for both players. And I find that, I find that rhythm very interesting. And that's why I say it's place bets and come bets. You, you should make them both part of your arsenal. I think it's really good to see that. So.